Welcome to AIN Debrief, where we take a deeper look at the most important or interesting aviation story of the past week with the AIN editor who covered it. I'm AIN News Editor Chad Trotvetter. In this podcast episode, I sat down with AIN Senior Editor Gregory Pollock to get his take on the Dubai Air Show that was held earlier this month and marked the first large-scale international aerospace event in the post-COVID era. Despite the pandemic, the show had decent attendance and plenty of news. This podcast is sponsored by Business Aviation Sustainability Solutions Company, 4Air. Okay, so I'm here with Greg Pollack. Uh, he is our editor, uh, the senior editor, but he also was the editor of our on-site issues at the Dubai Air Show last week. So, uh, Greg, so uh, you were kind of in the catbird seat at the show. So what was the mood like at the show? You know, how many people were there? Uh, what exhibitors were there? What exhibitors weren't there? What was the um, thought about COVID there? You know, what was the precautions? Uh, so what was the overall show like? Well, I mean, the the mood I thought was really upbeat, um, and and supr- there was surprise. There was a surprising number of people there as well. It was a very busy exhibit hall. Um, I think uh, the the count was something like eighty five thousand uh, visitors, which uh, was a record, um, which was kind of unexpected given the whole COVID situation. Um, as, you know, as, as far as the, again, the COVID situation, I didn't, it wasn't really noticeable, a noticeable difference between um, the way it normally is. You know, people were wearing masks, but other than that, um, it, it, everything went pretty smoothly. Um, people seemed to be able to travel pretty freely. As far as exhibitors, there were 1,200 of them, um, and uh, 148 countries were represented. Um, there were 160 aircraft on on static and in the flying display, so that was pretty impressive. I think the mood was one of relief. People are happy just to be out again and, and back and seeing people they hadn't seen in years. And um, it, just a very, very upbeat kind of kind of mood. Yeah, and I think Dubai is actually the only air show that has not had a uh, cancellation. Well, I guess Singapore um, – two years ago, but that was kind of the tail end and, and people kind of bailed on the show, I think too. So really Dubai is kind of the, the first air show that is returned that didn't have a really a hiatus, right? That's correct. Yeah. Um, yeah. Being in November, 2019 was before the whole COVID thing started. And um, so it's almost like they didn't miss a beat really. Um, there were a lot of exhibitors there and, you know, a couple held out like Gulfstream for one. Um, but they, they had decided that quite a while ago. Um, but you know, I, 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 again, I didn't see, I didn't see COVID being even an issue. Um, uh, I mean, it was, they, they did a very nice job as a matter of fact of, um, having a, uh, uh, a facility there to get tested before people went home because of the various requirements in various countries to, to be to be tested 72 hours, for example, before um, um, uh, arriving back in your home country. And they, they, they actually had a, an office there that, that provided that service for you. And uh, so that made things easy. Um, but uh, overall, um, you know, people are just very happy, I think, in general. So there's a lot going on at this show. Um, for example, the... Boeing 777X uh, was there uh, for the first time at any show. Um, you know, Russia had some things going on. Um, I know Israel came to the sh- to the Dubai show for the first time since, uh, well, since ever, but uh, also since they had the uh, peace agreement uh, with the Middle East. Yeah, yeah. There's quite a, there's quite a bit of an, an Israeli uh, presence there, and there were a lot of meetings between. Um, Individuals in the, from the Israeli uh, uh, contingent with Emiratis and and everyone just uh, it's almost like they've known each other for <laughs> for forever and uh, it, it didn't seem it just it just seemed like normal business um, and that's the way it should be I think um, but uh, yeah the, as far as the, the the equipment that's that was there the 777X did make its first international appearance at uh, period it wasn't just an air show appearance but they hadn't 
I don't think it's flown outside the U.S. Um, until it took the trip to um, Dubai, which was on November 9th, a um, uh, direct flight from Seattle. But that was quite – I would say the 777X was sort of the star of the show as far as hardware goes. Um, uh, you know, a lot of people were really interested in seeing it fly. It, it did a lot of – did a lot of interesting maneuvers in the air and people were commenting that it was com- almost completely sideways in one at one point while making a turn we we were hoping for a bit more clarity on on what what, uh, what the tr- where the 777X's certification um uh situation is right now um where there may be some uh, roadblocks, if there are any, um, what the FAA is looking at right at this point, because, you know, the, the, the entire backdrop to all this is the fact that regulators are taking a much more strict or much more a, a closer look at the 777X now since the uh, MAX uh, 737 Max debacle with those two crashes and um, and all all the criticism that the FAA got for being less than thorough in there. So so I guess the big question for me was what, where are the triple seven X stood in terms of, uh, for example, um, uh, type inspection authorization. They they got a letter from the FAA in May after they applied for it saying that they weren't still weren't ready. Um, And as far as I know, and from what I've been told by someone at Boeing, that they still have not gotten TIA. Um, So I was kind of hoping for an update on that. There wasn't a lot of detail. And we were, again, we were hoping that maybe even Tim Clark from Emirates would would say something. Um, We didn't get a chance to run into uh, talk to him, although I, I heard he was at the show at some point. Because Tim Clark has been one of the most vocal uh, critics of the of, of the triple seven X's, um, or of Boeing, and um, what what he believes and what he claims is, is a sort of a lack of communication over schedules and in performance. You know what what sort of performance the airplane is showing in testing and and whatnot. Whether or not they met at the show or not, I don't know, but. Um, but we didn't. Uh, unfortunately, we 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 didn't find out a lot um, of 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 really hard news about the triple seven X. It was more of a public relations exercise for Boeing. I think you know that said, it made the show much more interesting. I think the fact that the airplane was there with its folding wingtips and um, people got a got a kick out of that. So actually, before we dive into the uh, the Russia part. Uh, let's let's break for a moment to uh, hear from our sponsor, which is Four Air, uh, the company that does uh, sustainability uh, consulting for aircraft operators. Now more than ever, taking to the sky means taking responsibility for the climate altering emissions released into our environment with every departure. That's because the future of our shared planet along with the freedom of mobility that defines our way of life, depends on today's pursuit of absolute sustainability. There is no one solution, but with 4Air, you can advance every pillar of aviation sustainability. Learn how to make your flying part of the solution with a comprehensive sustainability commitment for individuals and operators alike. Visit 4Air.aero today. That's numeral 4AIR dot A-E-R-O. Okay, we're back. So, uh, Greg, so tell us, uh, Russia had a pretty big uh, presence at the show. So, uh, they have a new name for a low cost fighter jet, right? Um, yeah, well, they, they they have something called the Checkmate, um, and they had a huge pavilion there with the big Checkmate sign on it. And, and um, this was the first time they showed the the mock up outside of Russia. They they showed it at the Max Air Show um, this summer. Um, and gave a, and gave a big briefing on it there. Um, but this this uh, checkmate is uh, a competitor to the F thirty five and the or apparent competitor to the F thirty five and the uh, Gripen, um, and it, it's 
basic its basic benefit is that it's supposed to cost half of what those other airplanes cost. Um, for you know, as far as acquisition, the Russians also had an MC twenty one there, um, the Irkut narrow body that's getting ready for certification, and they they showed a, a, a super jet business jet, um, a version of the super jet called the Oris, which is the first time I heard that name, and um, so I, I guess they unveiled a new name for something that they've been working on for a little while. And then actually, Pratt and Whitney uh, also had some dues with ATR uh, on a new engine, right? That's right. They, the Pratt and Whitney they announced a new uh, engine variant of the PW one twenty seven. It's called the PW one twenty seven XT, meaning extra time on wing. And um, this this uh, particular engine allows for. Um, overhaul intervals to go from 14,000 to 20,000 uh, flight hours. So that's quite a big difference and um, saves a lot of money on maintenance. And it also burns 3% less fuel, apparently. Um, so, you know, a- ATR got a couple of uh, launch customers for for that engine. Um, first one, I believe, is being delivered in November uh, of next year. Um, so that's that's – Pretty exciting news for ATR. Um, it was kind of surprising that they chose Dubai to to, um, to uh, announce this. It's the Middle East is not a huge turboprop market, um, but um, good for them that they were able to uh, to uh, make a splash like the way they did at the show. I think they just lacked a a platform to launch it um, previously. I, you know, like we we were talking about, this is the first real international air show since uh COVID hit so that's right well i guess like you say singapore in in 2020 was uh kind of at the beginning of the COVID situation you know yeah but, um but uh yeah i mean overall like i said there's quite a bit going on there and uh, it, it it wasn't as sleepy as people thought it might be let's talk about the big battle which is uh airbus versus boeing um a lot of news outlets make a big deal about the orders from each. Do, do the orders really matter? Um, you know, Airbus typically out, you know, outnumbers uh, Boeing in orders at air shows anyway. So, what does it mean when Airbus is overtaking Boeing? Um, and what kind of orders did they get? Well, uh, Airbus again uh, really kind of took the lead at the show, um, as they tend to do for whatever reason. It could be things that we don't even know. Are, are happening behind the scenes in terms of, uh, you know, when when the customers decide they want to actually reveal that they are customers for the for the uh, airplanes after they've been ordered. You know, uh, Boeing says they don't save orders for air shows, order announcements for air shows. So uh, you know, it, it's it's a public relations thing, and it does drum up some excitement and a lot of talk at the show um, about uh, you know. I mean, and it also it also reflects how business is, is starting to pick up again, too. Um, and I think, uh, you know, Airbus, again, they started they, they landed the big order at the at the uh, show on the first day with uh, an AL, some, a big, big order from an Air Lease Corporation um, that included. The A350 freighter, which is a, a new uh, the freighter ver- cargo cargo version of the A350 that they launched back back in uh, in July, but didn't have any customers to announce yet. So they announced their first customer for that aircraft, which uh, was ALC, and I believe it was seven airplanes. Um, that was the, that was the the big order on on day one, and then. Um, Later in the show, they they sold another 255 A321 Neos to Indigo Partners, um, which uh, the four airlines all got involved, and it's Wizz Air, Frontier, Valaris, and JetSmart. They're all part of Indigo Partners, and they're all going to take part in 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 this uh, in this in taking delivery of this order. And so, how did Boeing do, though? You know, Boeing. Um, they had they had a, a, a trickling of orders uh, the first few days, um, mainly uh, involving uh, freighters. And uh, Emirates took two triple seven Fs, for example. Um, 
But then they, uh, uh, the day that we actually stopped, published our last issue, um, Boeing uh, announced a big, their big order for for uh, 737 Maxes with an Indian startup, um, uh, by the name of and it's it's uh, Akasa is the name of the startup, and it was 72 airplanes for for Boeing, and um, so that was sort of a uh, that kind of put a bow on things for the show in terms of orders, but um, and it, it also is, is, was good for, for, from Boeing's perspective um, to, to, to get a vote of confidence for the max after all it's been through. Was there any talk of what's going to happen at Singapore? Uh, it's fast, it's quickly coming up. We're only three months away from another air show. <laughs> yeah, um, I know. I mean, it's kind of hard to say. From what I understand, Singapore is happening for sure now. And um, there wasn't a lot of talk at the show about Singapore itself, but at, not at Dubai. Um, but um, yeah, Singapore is set for February 15th to 18th now. And um I just got a uh, something in, uh, from United Airlines, a, an email uh, saying, welcome back to Singapore starting, I believe it was January 5th. So that they're, Singapore is reopening to, uh, to foreigners and they'll be ready to go in February. So looking forward to that. All right. Excellent. Thanks for the overview of Dubai, Greg. Oh, no problem, Chad. Thanks for listening to AI and Debrief. Another podcast episode will air next Friday. In the meantime, go to www.aionline.com for the latest aviation news from AIN. <laughs>